It was quite a few years ago. I think it was way, way back in 2016 or early 2017. Uh, Mona was at a work conference. Our company had an annual event that they did uh, in a place called Noosa in Australia. They'd invite everyone from all around all states, so like Sydney and Melbourne and Adelaide, and we would hang out for a whole weekend. And as I sat down, um, among other things, there was a presentation, and there were two people giving that presentation, and one of whom I was really interested in uh, giving a talk around how she was helping teach kids how to write software. I was working up the confidence to go and talk to her, and then all of a sudden someone comes out and grabs me by the shoulders and he, he says, are you Will? And I said, yes, and he drags me over to Mona. I just remember in the party after the conference, just this is some person dragging Will towards me and saying, she dances, you dance, dance. Um, and that's how I first uh, got to talk to Mona. Well, he was, he met her and I think he was a little awestruck and he, he was nervous about, oh, I haven't practiced, will I be good enough? And so he didn't ask her to dance. He kind of put it off and he just talked a little. Going through a list of dances that we, we knew, um, there wasn't too much in common. So it was, hey, let's find another time to dance. We're back here in the US hearing about it. And he sounded really disappointed that he'd missed his chance. And I had a feeling like, there's something special about this woman. And then a year later, he met her again at work. And it turned out it was Mauna. <laughs> And the next year we go to dance at, at the party again. I really, owe, I really owe a lot to our, our company events, come to think of it. It wasn't anything, like he didn't really ask me out or anything at that time because we were states apart. But uh, the year after that, Will got a call to come and work in Brisbane. And he messaged me and he kind of said, oh hey, I'm in Brisbane, you wanna like catch up for dinner? And I was like, cool, okay. And I wasn't sure if it's a date, if it's like a dinner from a colleague or anything like that. So I was in this ambiguous state. I was emceeing the, the company event and I came down after doing some of the presentation and I, I sat at a bench with her and I told her how I felt rather than ask her out which I had to really work on because it uh, was a very vulnerable, kind of scary thing to do. He sat me down and he was like, I really like you, I think you're amazing and I would love to um, take you on a date. But he also said, uh, you know, if you don't, don't want this or if you're not interested, just let me know and I will not ask you again either. So I don't want to bother you again. Because she can't just like leave the company. That took a lot of effort to, to, to kind of build up the courage to do. And I think that made the whole difference because he wasn't like, I'll just keep asking until it's like a yes or anything. He just was very clear and he said, if you don't want it, just let me know. And I thought that was very, very amazing. And that really, yeah, and then I kind of said yes. <laughs> When my client ended and I flew back to Sydney, there was a time where we were having a remote relationship and so one of us would fly up or fly down. We kept doing that uh, for almost like three to four months. We had never planned on having a short-term relationship. I mean, the idea of marriage was always an end goal for both of us. We didn't want to do long distance, so it forced us to make a choice. The moment she decided to move to Sydney to be with Will it was when I, did, when I knew he was probably the right one for her because she wouldn't make such a big move without uh, being really sure of the person that she wants to be with. So um, I knew he was going to propose because the, the uh, December or the Christmas before that we had a long conversation and his parents, so Mary and Dennis, came down to India. I really want you to come to India for Christmas. I was like, okay, he really you know wanted it. <laughs> yeah, this is something important. And, and so we went to India and first we met Will and Mauna in Delhi and we had some time with them. They like to do things special for each other, something different. And 
do it together and they enjoy doing things different together. Uh, and they shared that with us. So when we went to visit them in India, they found special things for us to do with them and, that, uh, and, and with their family. So that, that was special. It created even new, deeper links between us. I actually will ask my dad at that time uh, in, in so marriage, my, my hand in marriage, I guess. So we, we had talked about it. It wasn't like a full surprise. She knew it was coming. There was no surprise. We had picked out the ring together and we were going on a seaplane flight in Sydney to a restaurant that we loved. Um, so she knew that it was going to happen on the day. What she didn't know was when and where. So I thought, okay, maybe it's the seaplane. So I was kind of chill till the Sunday afternoon. I decided I really didn't want to do it in the evening because why not have it sometime earlier in the day and be able to celebrate that throughout the day rather than in the night and you're all excited and then you want to go to bed. But then Saturday morning he wakes me up and he's like, do you want to go for a walk? I was like, uh, 6 a.m., sure, okay. It's raining cats and dogs. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, raining crazy, it was like sideways raining. So anyway, we took an umbrella and we did the walk all the way and I'm thinking, wow, okay, I'm so tired or I'm so sleepy, anyway. And the point where I had wanted to propose to her was a puddle. It was just covered in water. And so I'm sitting there realizing, well, this isn't gonna work. So I was like, well, that was a great walk. Let's start walking home. And then we walked back and I said to him, oh, that's a beautiful bridge. And he said, okay, let's take a photo. And I said, okay, cool. And there was a couple of people walking on the other side. And on the way back, I don't think she noticed this, but I was changing the pace of our walk based on another couple that was walking down the beach. And there was a small bridge, a wooden bridge on the side. And well, oh, I'm getting teared up just talking about it. Uh, we stopped, uh, we able to kind of meet up at that exact point, And I said, hey, could you take our photo? It'd be so nice. And then Mona was walking away. And when I said, and could you turn on the camera afterwards? I'm gonna to propose to her under this bridge. And she was like, what, what? And thankfully, Mona didn't notice that. So we took a photo and then I turned around to put my coat on and then I turned back and I saw him on his one knee and I was like, oh my God, it's happening. And honestly, I don't remember anything after that for the two minutes. Um, and the photo looks great. Doesn't look nearly as wet as it actually was. But that's, that's sort of how it happened, where it was trying to find the right moment and the right opportunity without realizing kind of, look, it's not gonna go the way I want it to, but it may go the way it should. Today's finally here after two and a half years of planning, so yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> two and a half years of planning a wedding is, is, is so long. I'm super excited to meet Mona, finally in person, and celebrate something that they should not have had to wait this long to celebrate. So I'm very excited, very pumped to get this started. I, I don't think I would have ever thought that I would be getting married to the love of my life on a beach on the other side of the world. If somebody had told me I was going to be getting married in like Wisconsin, you know, the other way around the world, exactly on the opposite side of the world, I probably wouldn't have believed. I don't know exactly what's going to happen here in just an hour, about an hour, <laughs> and what's going to happen. Um. <laughs> just know that it'll be worth it. <laughs>